Are your lecture videos piling up and you've got no time to re-watch them to develop any study notes? Well, what if you could turn your lecture videos into study notes and various study materials using AI in seconds? Well, that's what I'm going to be showing you today. I'm going to be showing you today how to use Notebook LM to convert your lecture videos into a transcript and then into various study materials. So let's get started. So here we are on the homepage of Notebook LM. For my scenario today, let's assume that I've just received access to three lecture files for topic eight in a current subject that I'm doing. This particular subject for this example today is related to an elective called Commonwealth Criminal Law studied here in Australia. And it's relating to serious drug offences under part 9.1 of the Criminal Code. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new notebook just to do with topic eight for this particular week in the semester. To kick off that process, we just go to the home page and we click on the create new button. And then we're presented with the add sources page. And from here, you can see the different file types that you can upload. And what I'm going to be doing is just uploading three lecture files, which are in MP4 file format. So let's just click on choose file. And then I'm just going to navigate to my lecture videos. And here they are. So I'll just select them. Now you may need to wait a few moments for your MP4 files to be uploaded. So all of my video lectures are now uploaded for topic eight. And you can see up the top, it's automatically added a heading up here for this particular notebook. And so I might just update that just by clicking in the top. And I might just put at the beginning of this that this is topic eight. So on my notebook homepage, I can see very clearly that this is only relating to topic eight material. So the first thing we want to do is to generate a transcript from our lecture videos. To do that, we just simply click on the MP4 file that we've uploaded into our notebook. So I'm going to click on the part one dot MP4 file. And you saw there under three seconds, the transcript for this video has already been generated down the bottom. So what you'll find is down the bottom here is the word for word transcript. So you can scroll down through that if you need to and copy and paste it into other locations if you want. And up the top, you'll see a summary of that particular lecture. So it says here, this source is the beginning of a lecture on serious drug and precursor offenses under 9.1 of the Australian Criminal Code and so on. And it also provides for us the topics so you can jump around the transcript in that particular video. All right, so now to go back, if we need to do the same thing for the other lectures, we can just go back, click up there, and then we do the same thing for the other lectures. And again, you've got the transcript down the bottom, you have a summary up the top, and the key topics for that lecture. So let's go back and let's now have a look and see what type of options you might have or some ideas on how you might want to transform the information and the learning content from those lectures into other material. So just a few ideas for you. One option might be is that maybe you want to create some flashcards. So let's go into the chat panel in the middle here and let's see what it generates. If I simply put in here a request. Please create flashcards on these four lectures to help me learn domain concepts and content provided. Press enter. There we go. So that took about five seconds for it to look at the content in those four lecture files. And now it's given us some suggestions on what we could use for flashcards. So we've got flashcard one. So on the front, what is the significance of the Pong Su mentioned in the first lecture? And then on the back of that flashcard, you've got the information around that, that question. And what you also have is on these gray circles is where if I click on those gray circles, it'll take me 
to that particular pinpoint in the lecture where he talks about this content. So I'm just going to scroll down just so that we can have a quick look. So let's see how many flashcards we've got. Looks like it's provided about 20 or so. And I'm sure you could go into the chat and drill down even further if you wanted some more flashcards um, cover some areas of the lectures in more detail then you can just keep adding further prompts and queries and questions into the chat panel but that is just one quick way that uh, you can convert this information into some learning tools for you now i also want to try and see if i can put in a prompt around asking it to create a table of cases that's covered in those four lectures so let's see what it generates i'm going to put in a simple prompt uh, please create a table of cases discussed in these four lectures and include a short uh, summary on why the case is important to my learning. All right, press enter and we'll see how it goes. That again took about five seconds. Um, so let's just scroll down and, and see what we're provided. Okay, so I've got my prompt up the top here and here is a table of the cases discussed in the four lectures along with a short summary of why each case is important. All right, so let's scroll down. It obviously hasn't included the full uh, citation. It's just given us the name of one of the parties in each of the cases. Um, but let's just have a quick look. So case name Campbell, importance for learning. This case decided around 2010 highlighted that the previous definition of import in the criminal code was too narrow and it was held that importation ended once the goods arrived in Australia and were ready to remain. This led to the amendment of the definition of import to include dealing with the substance in connection with its importation with links directly to where that's discussed in the lecture. Hey, I think that's a pretty good start and I think it's a nice summary as to why I need to make a note of the case of Campbell in Topic 8. Let's just scroll down and see what else is in here. So again, I could use the chat and if I wanted to have more detail to be added to that table, then I could just simply keep drilling down further by using the chat and asking it to include additional information. But I think this is a really great tool that you may find very useful from time to time. Now, as mentioned in another video, you can also use the mind map function, which is just here, and that will create a mind map for you based only on the information that you've uploaded. Let's give that a go. Again, you may need to wait a few moments for the mind map to be generated. Let's just click on that now and open that up. All right, so this mind map, it is saying it's based on the four sources that we've uploaded, and let's have a quick look. So the overview part, if I click here, we can see the different sections that's covered in that lecture. And of course, we can just keep drilling down. Now, if I click on to say, for example, in here, that will allow us to then go back and drill down to that particular pinpoint in the lecture. And so you can verify and check and get further details. Let me just go back and scroll up to the top. Right, now, one thing I need to mention, um, always remember if you are generating information in this chat and you don't wanna lose any of the information that's provided, you need to save it by clicking the save to note down the bottom here. So far we've looked at how to create a transcript, how to create flashcards, and also how to create a case table. Um, remember, you also have the options over here to create a study guide, FAQs, a briefing document, and then a timeline function as well. And of course, you can also create a, um, a podcast. But in this situation, you probably won't want to do that because you're actually moving from lectures and you're creating um, written text learning material. Let's have a look at the briefing document function. And it appears to be ready now, so we'll click on that. Great, so now what this is doing is it's actually summarizing for you all of the content in all of our uploaded sources. So from those four lectures, this briefing document, 
has a really nice summary. So there's part one, part two, part three. The element analysis is very important if you're studying Commonwealth criminal law. That's absolutely critical. The case law and then part four and so on. So you, I think that would be very helpful. Um, you might remember when we created the transcript, it was just a whole lot of text running into each other and it looked a bit daunting. Um, so you might want to use this as an alternative option to uh, generate some written text based on your lectures. Just coming back to the studio, let's now have a look at the study guide. Great, that's now ready. And again, this is now providing a summary only based on those four lectures. And in the study guide, it is providing us a list of the core legislation and the readings, which is great. And then it has here for us the key concepts covered. So that's extremely helpful. Again, this is a bit easier to read than when we just looked at the straight transcript information. And then the key cases, the focus areas for study, and it's also provided us a quiz. So it's given us 10 quiz questions, but it has also given us the answers to those 10 questions. And then down the bottom, it's also given us some essay format questions, which are looking really good. And then there's a glossary of terms. And of course, you've got the FAQ function as well. Let's just have a quick look there. And that's ready. And now again, it's looked at all four lectures and it's pulled out frequently asked questions and also provided us the answers as well. I think this is amazing. So that concludes this video. Uh, hopefully now you have a few tips on how to quickly convert your lectures into text-based learning materials. So as we learnt today, you not only have the ability in Notebook LM to convert your vid videos very quickly to a transcript, but you can also convert that information into really good, uh, robust learning materials, such as the study guide, the briefing document, the FAQ function, there's the timeline function, and also the mind map function. And of course, you saw how we used the chat function in the middle panel, where we asked it to create some flashcards for us, and we also asked it to create a table of cases with a short summary on why each case is important to my learning. So, so there we go. So hopefully that's a few extra tips there for you to help you in your legal studies. I'll see you next time.